Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As I was reading over the lessons for uh, this Sunday, uh, our first reading, of course, is the dedication of the first temple, Solomon's Temple, in Jerusalem. And it brought to my memory um, an article that I read while I was in seminary. Now, we're talking back around 1990 or so. Ran across an article that there was a fax service where you could fax your prayers to Jerusalem and someone would print out the fax and, and tuck it into the walls of what remains of, the, uh, of, of not Solomon's temple, but the subsequent temple in Jerusalem, what's known as the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. And I remember at the time thinking both, that's kind of weird, but also thinking how wonderful. So I wondered if that service, you know, are they still doing this? And so I Googled this morning, and sure enough, over a million prayers are received by a number of different services every year and printed out and those prayers are taken to the western wall and tucked into the cracks between the stones. And the, the same thing for which, Dave, uh, which Solomon prayed on this day of dedicating this first temple to God, he prayed the people from all over the world would hear about the God of Israel, and would come there to pray. And thanks to technology, if we can't make it in the body, we can make it in spirit, and we can make it by fax or by internet. Now, um, I also was interested to learn that the prayers are collected twice every year, and they are buried in the Jewish cemetery on the Mount of Olives. And of course, when something that's been consecrated to God is no longer of use, whether it's our bodies, our vestments, or these prayers, those sacred objects are either buried or burned. And these are buried on the Mount of Olives. So it's a, a, there's something that's really lovely about that, I think. It speaks to the desire that so many people have within them to have the deepest concerns of their hearts heard and to know that they're heard and to know that there will be a response, maybe not the response they want, but that there will be a response to the deepest longings that they carry within their heart. So we now are on the other side of the resurrection. All that remains of the physical temple is this one wall. And yet, in the epistles, we hear the language of stones built into a temple for God, and we are told that we are actually living stones in a living temple to the Holy God. Each one of us as we are strengthened and grow in the spirit, and as we are built and bound together by the love that is from God, we become that physical manifestation of God's presence on earth by the power of the Holy Spirit within each one of us. And there is something that we need to do to make sure that we are a strong living temple. In the letter to the Ephesians this morning, there is um, quite a list of things that we need to be mindful of, things that we need to pay attention to in terms of being strong, being, um, being not a weak link, a weak stone, but a strong part of this structure of God's living temple in our time on earth. And we are told to take up the whole armor of God. In an era where the Roman legions were everywhere, the image of armor certainly was something that was very vivid and could be imagined. So take up the whole armor of God because what we fight against is not other human beings. Other human beings may be causing death and destruction and suffering, 
but it is spiritual powers, spiritual forces of darkness and wickedness working against God, and that is the true enemy. And love is the most powerful weapon with which we fight that. My theology professor at seminary once said, the love of God is against everything that is against the love of God. And so in our battle, we are told, fasten the belt of truth around your waist, put on the breastplate of righteousness, and I love this, as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Use the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then the whole rest of that passage is about prayer, and about praying, and about praying for each other, praying all the time. It is our prayers that are the power source for all of those things that, that are listed out before. It is prayer that strengthens us in our ability to share the gospel. It is prayer that leads us more deeply into the scriptures. It is prayer that guides us in the decision-making processes of our lives because it is in taking that time with God to pray that we not only, like all of those faxes tucked into the walls of the, of the temple. It is our prayers that not only tell God our deepest desires and needs, but it is also in those times of prayer that we are he able to hear God's still quiet voice within us, guiding us, strengthening us, encouraging us, forgiving us, so that we, wherever we go, are living members of the temple of God, places where people can encounter God as Solomon prayed that the whole world might encounter God in coming to the temple that he had built. We pray every Sunday the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. I can't tell you how many times over all the years that I've been ordained that people say to me, I don't know how to pray. Well, that's what the disciples told Jesus. Teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. We don't know how to pray. Very, very simply, using the contemporary words, it's even more clear. Father, now think about this. Jesus had not yet been crucified, ascended. The Holy Spirit hadn't been sent. And Jesus teaches his disciples to call God Father. Wow. Father in heaven distinguishes God from all the other fathers in the world. Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom, your reign come on earth as in heaven. Give us today what we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive those who sin against us, and save us from the time of trial. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's all we need to know about prayer. So today, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, using those more traditional words, I invite you to, to say them from your heart. You know, sometimes we become so familiar with the words of our liturgy that words just roll out of our mouths. But I invite you today to pray those words from the heart because you are the temple of the living God. And together we become that visible manifestation for the world that Solomon's prayer might continue on into our day and that people everywhere would come to know the greatness, the power, and the redeeming love of the one we call Father. <laughs>